For thousands of years, the holy lands of the Middle East have run with blood. Here, the scars of battles fought between three of the greatest religions of the world are etched into the earth. But the deepest wound was made by a war between Christian and Muslim, began at the close of the 11th century, and fought for over 200 years. Fought for a tiny strip of land, just a few hundred miles long, but with the greatest prize, Jerusalem. And now, this holy war has become stuff of legend. Yet, there exists a more visceral legacy of this conflict, a legacy at the molecular level. Europe in the 11th century was a violent society. It was a time of weak central government, and the monarchies of France and Spain had not yet developed. Local feudal lords raided and fought one another. It was a time of endemic lawlessness. Blighted by famine and racked by petty wars, the European homeland was a cursed place. But there was good reason why men would risk everything to journey to a distant land from which they might never return. There was only one organization that had the ability to bind these vastly different groups together, the Church. The Catholic faith dominated 11th century Europe. People were bombarded with the idea that they were surrounded by sin. Almost anything one did in life was potentially sinful. It is as if the air they breathed was contaminated by sin. For the Crusaders, the key driving force was spirituality of the cross. They believed this war was a spiritual war, and by waging it, they would purify their souls of sin. They craved a better life in this world, and the next. This ideological campaign influenced hundreds of thousands of Europeans to settle in the Mediterranean, either in military expeditions, as pilgrims, or for trade. Many settled there and lived in the Frankish states, which were established along the coast of land that is now part of Turkey, Syria, and Lebanon. The European settlers thrived in these settlements, many of whom left unmistakable genetic traces. This is especially true in contemporary Lebanon where genetic identity is forged with religious identity. The Western European haplogroup in question follows a patrilineal spread through time, most notably in the Maronite Christians of Lebanon. In addition to Christian lines of descent, Muslim lines of descent are equally apparent. Lebanese Muslim men were found to have high frequencies of an Arabian Y chromosome grouping. This is typical of populations originating from the Arabian Peninsula who were involved in the Muslim expansions beginning in the 7th century. Historical sources show that four crusades reached Lebanon, the first, second, third, and sixth, and that the main populations contributing were the French, Germans, English, and Italians. The bulk of the crusader armies carried with them a specific haplotype that can only be found in the far west of Europe. It is within this religious and genetic duality of the Lebanese population that each distinct identity is a direct result of wandering conquerors. The Y chromosome carries the largest non-recombining segment in the human genome, and its haplotypes provide a rich source of information about male lineages. Yet, Lebanon's case is highly unusual. Genetic structuring by religion has been rarely reported among human populations. Such structure might only arise when several unusual criteria are met. Migrations based on religion must take place between areas of different Y chromosomal types. And these genetically differentiated communities must remain stable over long time periods. In Lebanon, these conditions appear to have been met for over 1300 years.
The close relationship between the Franks and Lebanese Maronites created a stronghold of heterodox Catholicism. In northern Lebanon, with its predominantly Maronite population, was an outpost of militant Western Christendom during the period that elapsed between the Crusader and the Ottoman conquests. According to their traditions, the Maronites were always in union with the Roman See. They fiercely opposed the Monophysites and the Monothelites. These initial connections led to centuries of Frankish and Italian support for the Maronites, even after the fall of the Crusader states in the region. Maronite chieftains fought alongside Frankish lords, either as their knights, allies, or vassals. As such, the Franks saw the Maronites as the Roman Catholic brethren. It is highly probable then that the Franks and other Western European Crusaders intermarried with local women, thus creating a mixed race population.